Welcome to this presentation on immunity. Basically, it's the way that your body becomes immune to certain diseases. And the way that it does it is by being able to produce things called antibodies against bacteria and viruses. And we're going to look at how that happens right now. So first, let me show you what a bacterium looks like. Viruses are a little bit different, but the same principles apply. So I'm going to draw this bacterium as a long rod-shaped thing here. I'm going to put some of these pointy things on the surface of the bacterium. Now these are called antigens and all bacteria have them on. Let me put that label on. So the spiky things there are antigens. Now if we can destroy those antigens we will kill the bacterium. So how do we go about destroying those antigens? Well it's down to our white blood cells. Our white blood cell comes along and it has to figure out how to produce the right antigens. Now the white blood cell isn't intelligent, it can't see the bacterium, it doesn't know what sort of antigens it's got on it. So all it can do is try different shapes. So for example it might first produce this shape of something called an antibody. Does that fit on top of there? No, it's the wrong shape, so that's no good. So that particular antibody doesn't work. So let's try another shape. So here's another shape of antibody. We're going to try to see if this one will attach onto the antigens of the bacterium. Will they? No. No good. Those antibodies don't work either. Now the white blood cell will be trying this for days upon end. So from the time that you become ill and you first become infected with the bacterium, the white blood cells are desperately trying to sort out the right antibody to kill them. Let's try another type of antibody, see if this one works. Or will that fit on there? No, that's no good either. But eventually, all being well, the white blood cell will produce an antibody that is the right shape to latch onto the antibodies. And as soon as this happens, they start to be produced in more and more numbers. They swamp the bacterium, not just this one, but the others like it, and they destroy it. They completely kill the bacterium. And we start to feel better. All of the symptoms of the disease will go away, whether we've had a fever or um, spots on our skin or whatever. Now, the white blood cells have killed the bacterium by destroying its antigens. They've done their job. But here's the really clever bit. Some years later, the same disease comes back. It might be measles, for example. So the same sort of bacterium returns again. The same shaped bacterium has happened years and years and years before. And more importantly than the shape of the bacterium, it has the same shape antigens on its surface. Now the difference this time is that special white blood cells that have stayed in the body instantly recognise this particular sort of antigen again. This time there's no messing about, it doesn't take days to produce the right sort of antigen. In fact it might take a matter of minutes. So before we can start to feel ill, before the number of bacteria can reach the critical level in our body and start to, to cause symptoms of illness, before we even know we've got the disease again, the bacterium is destroyed. You won't feel ill. We say that we've become immune to the disease. And our immunity has come from our white blood cells learning which antibodies to produce in response to the bacterium. So our immune response depends on our white blood cells knowing what sort of antibodies to produce. But is there a way of giving us immunity without us having to go through suffering the disease first? Well, the answer is yes, there is. And it happens by vaccination. Now, here's how vaccination works. You inject into the body a bacterium like the one that causes the disease, in fact it could even be the one that causes the disease, it still has its antigens on its surface, but the big difference is that this bacterium has been killed before injecting it. You inject enormous numbers of dead bacteria of the disease, so these might be measles bacteria for example, you inject large numbers of them into the body. 
Now, your white blood cells aren't intelligent enough to realise that those bacteria aren't alive. So, they will go about producing antibodies until they find the right sort that fit. Of course, in the meantime, you're not going to feel ill because the bacteria are already dead. So they're not going to cause any problem to you. But you are become, going to become immune to the disease without going through the illness. And that's what vaccination is. It's giving you dead bacteria with the right sorts of antigens on for your white blood cells to produce the right sort of antibodies to kill them. Of course, years later, again, this time, a real living bacterium might appear. But straight away, your body knows which sort of antibodies to produce to kill it. No messing about, it's killed. So you will never suffer from that disease. You don't get the disease when you have the dead bacteria, when you receive the vaccine, and you won't get the disease when the living bacteria return either, because by then your body's learned how to make the right sorts of antibodies. Right, there are some terms that you need to practice to make sure that you understand. I'll put them on the next slide for you. So the key words I'd like you to understand, please, from this presentation are immunity. This is when a bacterium, a dangerous bacterium, a pathogen, if you like, can get into our body without causing an illness because we're immune to it. All bacteria have antigens on their surface. They're small identifying particles. All of our cells have antigens on them as well. All of your cells have antigens on, but not the same as the bacterial ones. So the bacteria get into your body, they have antigens on them. Your white blood cells learn how to make the right sort of antibody to destroy the antigens. Now, the first time you're ill, it will take them a long time to do that, and you can actually start to feel very, very poorly because the bacteria are increasing in numbers. But the other way to do that is by injecting you with a vaccine of dead bacteria so you don't feel ill in the first place. So vaccination is when you are injected with a large quantity of dead bacteria that have the right sort of antigen on to trigger the immune response from the white blood cells. And one last thing. There's one vaccine that the examiner likes to ask about. It's called MMR. And in particular, the examiner likes to ask what MMR stands for. Well, the MMR vaccine treats three diseases. It's one vaccine that treats three diseases. And they are measles, mumps and rubella. Rubella is another name for German measles. So if you could remember those, that would be great. So the MMR vaccine deals with measles, mumps and rubella. And that's it for this presentation. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye.